Apple's ecosystem is powerful, but imagine controlling all your native apps, contacts, notes, messages directly from your AI agent. Wow, ChatGPT does not know how to write an intro. Anyways, today I'll show you an insane integration that brings Apple into Cursor, Claude Desktop, or Windsurf. It's a pretty fun tool with huge potential, so let's jump right in. I just came across this GitHub repository called Apple MCP, and I've got to give credit to the author who shared it on x.com. It's a really cool way to integrate all your Apple native apps into your AI agent, so I thought I'd share. Down here, you can see the command for installation. For Claude Desktop, the method is slightly different, but let's go ahead and paste into our Cursor IDE. So, you can see that I've pasted the config file provided here into Cursor, and this is the command we're going to paste into the MCP menu. Now, let me show you what to do next. Go into Cursor Settings, then navigate to the Features section. Scroll down, and you'll find the MCP Server section. You can see that I've already added the Docker MCP. From here, just add a new one. You can name it anything you want, this is just a nickname, so I'll name it Apple MCP. For the type, select command, since we're actually running a command, and then paste it here. All right, now let's add it. Give it a little time, and as you saw, it will turn from red to green once it detects the tools. Currently, it has access to contacts, notes, and messages, since the author is still developing it. But after I show you what's been implemented, we'll go ahead and use cursor to integrate the other apps as well, so stick around till the end of the video because these MCP integrations keep getting crazier day by day. So I've opened up the Composer tab and the first thing to note is that you need to switch to agent mode for the MCP server to work properly. After that, I'm just going to ask it to send a greeting message to my friend. Let's see how it goes. It's using the MCP tool along with the contacts tool that it has access to. All right, let's go ahead and run it. The number was found and now it's notifying me that it's going to send a greeting message using the messages tool. It says the message was successfully sent. Let's go ahead and check. And there you have it. You can clearly see that the message was actually sent. I did all of this while staying inside Cursor using the MCP tool. This is pretty crazy. It basically makes Cursor a part of the Apple ecosystem. Another thing to note is that whenever an Apple app is used, permission is required. But in my case, I had already granted permission, so I wasn't asked for it. Okay, so if you want to customize it and add the rest of the functionality, let me show you how I did it. Down here, in the local development section, you're going to copy and paste the commands, except for the last one. That's because we need to give the command to cursor for it to run properly. And for that, we need the full path. So just copy everything up to bun install, and once the commands have run, you'll be inside the directory like I am. Then type real path with index.ts. This command will give you the full path. Just copy it and go back into cursor. Let me close this first. Now go into settings again, navigate to the MCP server section and delete the old one. Then add a new one. I'll name it Apple MCP again. Change the command type and enter one followed by the full path. It works the same way, but now it has the full path. So let's add it. And now, you can see that the rest of the tools are also available. For example, the calendar tool, reminder tool, and several others. Okay, so now that it's added, let's test out a tool that wasn't previously available. Let's go with the reminders tool. But before we continue, I should mention that you'll need to restart cursor after making changes. At least for me, the modifications didn't take effect until I restarted cursor. Now, one more thing. I'm not sure if it will happen this time, but let me just ask it first. All right, it looks like it's working right now. However, I did run into an issue before, and this only happened with Claude 3.5 Sonnet. It would say it was retrieving my reminders, and then the chat would just end. But when I switched over to GPT-4, it worked fine. This only happened once or twice, but as you can see, it seems to be working fine now. So, let's go ahead and run the tool, and you'll see that my reminders from Apple Notes will be listed. Let me just open them up, and there you go. You can see that I have a reminder to make a new video. And in the completed section, there's the thumbnail reminder. Both of these were successfully fetched in cursor. All right, now let me show you how I implemented the rest of the features. If we look at the readme, you'll see that it states some features still need to be added by the repo's author. So what I did was give it a prompt asking it to check the readme, specifically the features section. The ones marked as to do needed to be implemented. For implementation, it had to follow the structure of the existing utility files like contacts, messages, and notes, 
which were already completed. By referencing those, it was able to generate the remaining utilities as well. So, after implementing this, I tried using the notes feature, but it initially confused me because it returned all the notes at once and they weren't sorted properly. What the original implementation did was search all the notes and then return a result, which didn't feel structured. So, I started debugging, checking if it was implemented correctly, and prompted it multiple times, thinking it wasn't working. But when I went back and actually examined the implementation, I realized that it just wasn't structured properly, not that it was broken. To fix this, I gave it the prompt you see on the screen. What I asked for was a proper navigation system, something more hierarchical, where it would first list folders, then allow me to navigate into a specific folder, and within that, I could search for a specific note while keeping the previous search functionality intact. Now, let me actually show you how it works. Let's ask it to list all the folders in Apple Notes. It's asking for permission, so let's go ahead and run the tool. And there you go, it has listed all the folders. Now, let's go ahead and open a folder. It's now checking what notes are inside the important stuff folder and it has printed that there is one note. If I ask it to show the contents of that note, it will retrieve them. And as you can see, it has successfully listed out the contents of the note, showing exactly what's written inside. So this is how I changed it. The search feature still works. If you've written something specific inside a note, it will fetch that. It can still search all notes, but this structured navigation system is a huge improvement over the original design. All right, that's a wrap on this one. This Apple integration is honestly insane, and there's still so much more you can do with it. I'm always testing out new ways to push these tools further. So if you're into this kind of stuff, stick around. I've got more crazy setups and deep dives coming soon. You won't want to miss them.